Well, howdy there, Internet students. It's Mr. Hermanson again. Today we're going to start to learn about a thing called the distributive property. It's uh, really a handy property to know about. And uh, in order to simplify and evaluate algebraic expressions, you're going to need to know this. Um, <clears throat> you may know this already if you're good at mental math. Okay. Um, if I was trying to find the total cost of buying three pencils, each costing 99 cents, um, I could do that in my head. I would just do three times one dollar and then uh, subtract three times one cent. Uh, and I know that because uh, one dollar minus one cent is the same as 99 cents. So it's really just $3 minus 3 cents, which is $2.97. Um, see if you can use my reasoning to do the next problem. So, um, so you could just do 5 times a dollar and then just do 5 times the extra penny, the 1 cent. Okay. Um, so whenever you're doing something like that, like if you're trying to do uh, 24 times 4, and instead you do 20 times 4 plus 4 times 4, that is, which is 240 plus 16, which is 256. Um, so whenever you're using... Um, mental math like that, you're actually using a distributive property. All right, so let's uh, let's dig into this a little bit more and make sure we can understand what it what it does for us. So uh, Sandra, Kate, and Malik are each holding one bag and two extra blocks. And each bag holds the same number of box, blocks. So um, if you were to find the total number of blocks, you would have to take the number of blocks per bag times the three people um, plus the extra two blocks times the three people. That would be one way you could do it. Another way you could do it is just add the five blocks per person plus the two blocks. And then multiply that by three. So it's seven blocks per person times three. Either way, you get uh, 21 blocks. All right, so you um, go ahead and pick one of those ways to figure out the number of blocks per bag, and then see if you can write it an expression to represent if each person had, if there's B blocks per bag. All right, so um, I'm not sure that you got your expression, but here's what I'm thinking. You take the B blocks per bag, and you add 2 to that, because they have 2 extra in their hand, and then you multiply that sum by 3. Or you can take 3 times the B blocks in each bag, plus 3 times the extra 2 to get the total, and you could just write that as 6, because 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, and here's, uh, here's those two different ways. So you could do the 20 in each bag plus 2 separately first, and then multiply that by 3. Or you can just do 3 times the 20 blocks in the bag plus 3 times the 2 extra blocks. And um, those are demonstrating um, how you can use the distributive property to write an expression in a different way. All right, so, um, and I just showed you, Sonia's method is to add the, the number of blocks in the bag plus the extra two and then multiply that by three. Omar's method is to multiply the number of blocks in a bag times three and then multiply the extra two times three also. Okay, so we're, what we're going to do is learn how to do those two different ways of writing. Um, now, another, uh, another way to remember this is by using a multiplication table. 
we can take the 3 and use that as one side of my multiplication table. And then we can split up the other two things that we're adding together and put those on the top. And uh, this is a handy little way to record what we're doing. So I would take the 3 times the x to, for the first part, and then I would take the 3 times the 5 to get the other part. So 3 times quantity x plus 5 is the same as 3 times x plus 3 times 5, which is 15. Now you can also think of multiplication as repeated addition. So you have x plus 5 added 3 times. And you'll notice that lined up here you have x added 3 times, which is 3x, and 5 added 3 times, which is 15. All right. So uh, Brianna, Brianne replaced three blocks in the front of each of the four bags. Now remember, again, each bag has the same number of blocks in it. And you're going to write two ways to show these expressions. Um, one is we're going to call factored form, and that'll look like this. That's where you add the box the number in the bag plus the extra three and then multiply it by the four batches. Okay. Now the expanded form is where you take the find the number of blocks in the bag separately. So do four times six, and then add to that the extra three blocks four times. And that looks like that. So factored form has parentheses. Um, expanded form does not. Okay. And then once you have that. Uh, you can go ahead and add those up. That would be 24 plus 12, which is 36. All right. Um, go ahead and you see if you can fill in the rest of that. All right. Here's where I, what I got for that. Now, um, notice we always had the, a 12 added on, so you could just write that as 12 instead of 4 times 3 there. All right. Uh, Keenan has 4 blocks in front of three sets of two bags. Um, for each situation, show a couple ways of, of doing this. So, so in each of these, here's my factored form. I'm seeing two bags. So I'm going to do 2 times b plus an extra 4, like that. And then there's three sets of those. Now, the other way I can do it is just take my two bags times 3. And then add separately my four extra blocks times three. Now this one I can actually simplify a little bit. Um, I know that three times two is six. And that makes sense because um, if there's two times three bags, there'd be um, in that there'd be six. And then three times four is 12. So I can write it like that. Notice what I did there. I multiplied the 3 times the 2 to get the 6, and the 3 times the 4 to get the 12. All right, you, get, you try the rest of those. Sorry about that. Those expressions should go down here. And the other expressions are actual totals. All right. All right, I'm not exactly sure how you wrote them out, but notice you always have a 3 and a 2 in every one of these. So um, they all have 6 times in them. And notice in my final expression, I have 6 times b plus 12. All right, flowcharts can also help you see different ways to express a quantity. Think about how you might create a flowchart to calculate the number of blocks in situation in exercise 2. So if you knew what B was first, you would multiply that by 2. And then you would add 4 to that. And then you would multiply that by 3. Okay? And that would give you the total. All right? So the output expression would be uh, 2 times b plus 4 
and then multiply that by 3. Okay. Now another way you could do that is you could, um, because you saw that, we ended up multiplying um, by 6 every time. So I could just take my b times 6 and then add to that um, my, my uh, extra 12 that I always had. And so I end up with 6 times b plus 12. All right, so Sandy placed one block in front of each of the four bags. Find two expressions for the total number of blocks she has. See if you can do that. All right, so I was thinking there was x in each bag, so I multiplied 4 times x, and then I added the extra 4. That's my expanded form. I could also add the x plus 1, how much is in each bag, plus the extra 1 block, and then multiply that by the 4 batches. Okay. Uh, Simon and Zoe's teacher held up three bags and told the class that each contained the same number of blocks. She removed two blocks from each bag. How can you express the number of blocks still in the bags? Okay, so um, go ahead and read this cartoon. But um, what, what I'm thinking is that, so there's B in each bag, right? So you're going to have 3 times B, and then you're going to subtract the 6 that got taken out of there. Okay. Now, um, you could also look at it a different way. You could think of one batch of B minus the two that were taken out, and then just multiply that by the three batches. So those are the two ways to write that subtraction problem. Okay. Now, we're going to see if they actually um, seem like they're the same. Okay. So what we're going to do is... Um, pick a number of blocks and find the answer for both ways. So with Zoe's method, you're going to do 3 times this input number right here. 3 times 2 is 6, and then you're going to subtract 6. That would be 0. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 6 is 6. Go ahead and fill in the rest of those. Now Simon's method is to subtract from B 2 first and then find that answer and multiply that by 3. So we would do, uh, for this input, we would do 2 minus 2, which is 0, and then multiply that by 3 is 0. For this input, we would do um, 4 minus 2 first, which is 2, and multiply that by 3, and that's 6. Uh, verify that it works for the other 3. Hey, that seems to work. So, um, I'm going to just give you a little problem here to summarize. So this would be considered factored form. Let's say, and you can think of this as uh, A as the number of in a bag. Okay. And I'll just say add 3 to this. That's one way to write it. The other way to do it is to multiply the 4 times the, the amount in those uh, two bag sets. And that would give you... 8, 4 times 2 is 8, and then do this 4 times 3 separately, which is 12. All right, so think about that. Go ahead and try some of the problems. If you have concerns, message me. Otherwise, we'll see you soon.